Parshas Mishpatim. This week's parsha contains the formulation, the famous formulation, Nasev and Ishma, that the children of Israel uttered as an indication of their acceptance of the Torah. Let's look at the verse, the context within which this declaration was made. We're talking about Perak Chavdalad Pasuk Zayin, that's 24-7. It reads as follows. Vaikach Sefar Bris is talking about Moshe. Moshe took the Book of the Covenant. We'll talk about what that is in a minute. Vaikra Ba'oznea Am. And he read it into the ears or the hearing of the people. Vayomru. <clears throat> and they said, Ko Asher Diber Hashem Na'asev Nishma. Everything that Hashem said, we will do it. And we will hear. We will listen. A couple of questions. First, as we indicated, what's in this Sefer Abris, this Book of the Covenant? And secondly, the phrasing of the children of Israel seems to be the reverse of what we would naturally think is the method with which one assimilates information, which is Nishma B'naseh. We will hear it, perhaps learn it, and we'll do it. Why does it say those words in the reverse? Or why did they say those words in the reverse? So, first of all, let's talk about this Sefer Bris. According to Rashi, this Book of the Covenant was not the Sefer Torah that we have. It could not have been, because many of the events that are written, recorded in the Sefer Torah, had not yet taken place. What could have been written was the entire Torah up until that time, and Rashi says exactly that. Rashi says, from Bereshis until this point. And it includes mitzvos that were commanded and at Mora. What mitzvos were those? For example, Shabbos was uh, was commanded at Mora. So we have Sefer Abris, which is a less than full Sefer Torah. It's a complete Sefer Abris. It's a complete Book of the Covenant, but it's not what we call a Sefer Torah. There are still things yet to be written in the Sefer Torah that are not in this Sefer Abris. Nasev Nishma. What does Nasev Nishma mean? Well, according to some, this means whatever Hashem has said so far, which is recorded in the Sefer Abris, Nishma, we will do, Vinishma, and we'll listen to everything else that comes down the line. In other words, there's an acknowledgement that Hashem may well speak more, and He may well give additional commandments and additional lessons and additional exhortations, if you will. And the children of Israel are declaring we'll do what we have heard already and we commit to doing in the future, to hearing in the future, what Hashem will utter and we'll do that as well. That's one explanation. There are many explanations. We will not cover all of them. Now, <clears throat> the Ibn Ezra cites several and one of them is Nasa, we'll do it, the Nishma, and we will study and talk about it so that we will not forget. In other words, an essential component of doing is studying. Now, an, another approach is possible. We know that in uh, Pirkei Avos, in the third chapter, in the Ethics of the Fathers, the third chapter, the ninth Mishnah, says, Kol shema asav merubin Anyone for whom their actions are greater than their learning or wisdom, then their wisdom will persist. It will survive. Now, how does that work? So we have a tradition that although it is frequently the case that a person's thoughts influence his deeds, it is most profoundly the case that a person's deeds influence his thought. How does that work? Well, think of the observance of Shabbos. If you were to simply, to have not experienced Shabbos ever in your life and to simply study about it, what would you study? You would study the prohibitions, the 39 malachos. As a practical matter, what does it mean for us today? We are unplugged, as they say. We don't talk on the phone. We don't email. We don't watch TV. We don't drive our cars. Lots of don'ts. A lot of them. And if you would just read that, you would have uh, an opinion that Shabbos is a prison. If, on the other hand, you experience Shabbos, sitting around the table, singing, 
the good food, the lack of distractions by technology, and business, which is prohibited to talk about, and all other manner of distraction, you realize that far from being a prisoner, you're actually much freer on Shabbos than you are on any other day of the week. When you are, if not a slave, certainly subjugated to all manner of not only distractions, but demands. And all of those demands do not apply on Shabbos. We don't even make requests for what we lack on Shabbos, at least not what we lack physically, because we're good. On Shabbos, that's the attitude. We're good. We take naps. Who naps in the middle of the afternoon? I mean, some people do, but generally speaking, people who go to work, work. And they don't have an opportunity to relax. Shabbos is a complete game changer. It's literally a vacation. We are vacating the ordinary world and we're in an island in time. Go explain that to someone who never experienced it. Shabbos is a bunch of restrictions. And that is true. It is a bunch of restrictions, but that's not all it is. And you only experience the beauty of Shabbos by experiencing the beauty of Shabbos, by observing Shabbos, not by studying it, although you can get a glimpse into studying it, but you can't experience it that way. So in other words, experience will yield a dimension of understanding that learning alone cannot grant. This is counterintuitive and it's profoundly true. Chazal say, recorded in Sefer Chinuch and in other places, Ksava Kabbalah, Acharei HaPu'ulos Nim Shachim Halavavos. After the actions, the heart follows, or the mind follows. We simply get additional understanding that we could not get from simple study. Nasa Vinishma. We will do and we will hear. As a result of our observance of the mitzvos, we will gain an additional understanding of the mitzvos and, uh, and of the will of our Creator. What this means is that some people have a barrier to performance of mitzvos because they say, I will not do something that I don't understand. We, as people of the book, as Haredim al Devar Hashem, those who are zealous, who tremble to do God's will, we don't say that. We say, we will perform the mitzvahs. And if we're Zoha, if we're fortunate, if HaKadosh Baruch Hu grants us the wisdom, that performance of the mitzvahs will increase our understanding, will grant us wisdom, will create a new level of intellectual and emotional achievement and insight that we wouldn't have had before. Na'ase v'nishma. We will do and we will hear. Have a good chance.